Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And I was talking to somebody on Discord, and he was listing off ways that Windows was apparently better than Linux. And one of them is that Windows has more privacy features than Linux. And so if you under if if you notice what operating or distribution of Linux that I have right here, you're gonna notice that I'm about to prove them 100% wrong. So basically, this this is a virtual machine running Tails Linux, and so basically, what Tails is, it was actually made for like people who are oppressed by governments, people who are like on the run from governments and whatever and basically anybody who wants who needs perfect privacy you can get it here uh, people in china use it to escape uh censorship from the great wall of china now basically how tails works it is a completely live system that means that when you turn it on and then when you shut down your computer everything that you've done on the machine is immediately erased there is nothing left everything is stored on ram so another cool feature of this is tor so basically what tor is it is a privacy network that allows you to route your traffic through three individual proxy networks and then to your destination so basically your traffic is anonymized and not even any one person that are running those nodes can figure out what your traffic is and that's the you may know that that's a key problem with the VPN is that if you're running a VPN it can either be a major privacy tool or it can be just a way to completely steal all your data and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong when they think that VPNs are private and that's absolutely not true also basically another feature of Tor is that whenever you go to like let's say you go to like google.com and then then you go to DuckDuckGo.com. The end nodes that you're going through Tor are completely different, so they can't match you across services. Another cool feature of Tails is that it spoofs your MAC address. So if you go here to individual uh, settings, you can see that I have MAC address spoofing and it is turned on by default. So basically what MAC address spoofing is, is the MAC address is the address in your Wi-Fi chip or your Ethernet that basically I personally identifies whatever device is being used to connect to the internet so or at least to a network so what MAC address spoofing will do it'll completely randomize that address and make it so you cannot be identified by what device you're using so let's say you go to you use this tails operating system and you go to like a shop, copy shop 10 like 10 times Every time you go to that coffee shop, you'll have 10 different, uh, it'll seem like you, you have like 10 different laptops going to that, uh, Wi-Fi shop, but in reality it's the same laptop. So basically, you're completely anonymous in the way that your device connects to a network as well. And also, with most Linux distros, there is no telemetry whatsoever. This does not phone home to the Boehm project. This is not phone home to any of the developers, doesn't phone home to Mozilla, Google, none of those people. That when you start the system, even when you connect to the internet, there's nothing connecting any internet services most of the time. At least they're not tracking what you're doing. And we can prove this because Tails is also completely free software. Not free as in price, but free as in freedom. You have the free right to go into the source code, look at it, study it, modify it, and distrib distribute copies of it. And that's something you'll never get from Microsoft with Windows. Now, I'm going to start up Tails now. I'm also going to take this out of floating mode, this window, so I can get a bigger screen resolution. I'll, leave it, I'll even go full screen so you can get the full experience of what it looks like. And one thing about Tails is that the traditional way of doing it is that you actually flash the ISO onto a USB flash drive and you plug it into your computer and then you boot into the flash drive. And the idea behind that is that 
there is no operating system that is watching what you're doing. So, like, let's say you were an idiot and you ran Tails on a virtual machine in Windows, then Windows would be able to spy on you and figure out what you're doing. And so that's just, you're just killing yourself there. Uh, I'm fine because I'm using Linux and I built this. I know exactly what's running in the system. I built it myself, so I can trust the host operating system. So here's it. here it is. It's the GNOME desktop environment. And so um, basically I have my traditional gnome you have your taskbar right here so i press the winter the windows key here and i have my taskbar right here i have my applications and here i have workspaces and kind of show you how all this works so basically i told you that we were routing all our stuff through tor i can open up tor browser i'll even show you that this is pretty much a normal computer i can get files Let's see we can get mail reporting Let's get an email client, why not? So I'll show you applications. So here's some of the applications installed. We've got Audacity, Brazero, um, GIMP, which is a really good application, Inkscape, KeyPass XC, this is a uh, password manager. So like you have one password, that's your master password, and that encrypts all your regular passwords. So you can have many different passwords that go to many different services so if one gets hacked it can't find out your password for other services unless you use the same one for some reason and then so we have the Electrum Bitcoin wallet which by the way is the best Bitcoin wallet you can get we got a document viewer so we can view PDFs disk viewer, calculator we got an archive manager so we can open zips uh, tarballs and we got the LibreOffice suite so we can edit documents there's our uh, LibreOffice Writer, which is like Microsoft Word. We can look at our Onion circuits. We can, here's Onion Share, so it allows me to share files with other people via the Tor network. We got passwords and keys that just, that holds passwords for thing, things in the system. Uh, Pigeon Internet Messenger, which is an awesome application. I love Pigeon. It allows you to connect to different uh, internet chatting services. We got Power Statistics root terminal which is basically the admin terminal which we can't use uh, that's one thing I forgot to mention so basically on this tail system by default you don't have admin privileges at all and so one the main po attacking point of most hacks is social engineering so if you can convince anybody to give you admin privileges for an application that might be malicious you can take control of an entire system so basically they disabled the root user if i try and open the root terminal i have no idea what this password is and i can't sign in show you some more stuff and so if you're running tails on a usb stick you can actually have a completely encrypted persistence volume so let's say you didn't want all of your stuff to be completely erased you could have an encrypted volume that holds encrypted files so you don't have to recover them from somebody else or just have them completely deleted we got our text editor sound recorder we got a package manager of course I can't use that because I can't be administrator so I'll show you all this stuff I'll put this over here so here we have Tor Browser, and now we're on the Tails website. Here's our file manager. Of course, we don't have anything. Why would we have anything? I haven't used this yet. So we got our trash right here. We got some desktop icons. Here's our taskbar. But if you were ever curious about what Tor nodes you were kind of coming through, you could open up Onion Circuits and see all the circuits, the nodes that we're going through. So right now, we're connected to this IP address through these three nodes. And these are just other nodes that we have activated on the system. And let's say that I go to, I don't know, duckduckgo.com. One of these nodes will activate and read something out. There we go. So now we have this, no this circuit and then these are three nodes so basically it goes to an unnamed node here so it goes here to here to here are the circuits to connecting to DuckDuckGo 
And so basically, nobody knows where the heck I am except for me. So over here, we have our email client. And so what we can do here, we can set up any of our email accounts with ha having to activate the web interface, which will oftentimes have to enable JavaScript. And that will often repeal your hardware details. And it will might not identify you. Um, it's not going to identify me very well because I'm running in a virtual machine. Which is why I kind of like doing this in a virtual machine. It's a bit slow sometimes, but it's okay. I can check my email view of this, which is pretty cool. I actually really like Thunderbird. And so, if I have a Tails USB stick, and somebody else has a USB stick, I can install Tails for somebody else via my Tails USB stick, via this utility. And so that's pretty cool. If at any point you're confused, you can open up here on the desktop the Tails documentation. And so we can sort of read all through this thing if we need any more information about Tails. And there's a lot of information here. Honestly, this is more than I could really talk to you about in a video, but this is privacy. Many people, many big tech companies are trying to push this idea of privacy, especially like Apple nowadays. And admittedly, they are doing some really good things for privacy, such as what they did with Facebook when they sort of showed all of the permissions that Facebook was, the Facebook app was using. And basically, they were figuring out everything about your life, you know. And so basically, that really open a lot of people's eyes to the dangers of Facebook. And this system is based on Debian Linux. And it is, by all means, a complete operating system. So, that's as, I can even show you that I'm connected to Tor. So if I go to check.torproject.com, I can see that my IP address is this one right here, and I am connected via Tor. And basically, I'll even show a little bit of Tor browser today. So basically, I have my security level here. So what we can do with the security level is I can basically tell this thing how secure I want, secure and private I want my web browser to be. And I always like to keep it at safest, which just which blocks JavaScript that which which prevents people from identifying my hardware and also disables uh, basically media. So I believe the times that you start media can be used to track how long you've been on a website. And so if you have some like an audio file silently playing in the background, that can be used to track you a little bit. And also things linking to other web pages can also be used to cross track you. And also cross-site cookies, I believe, are blocked on that setting. We also have uBlock Origin, which will not only block ads, but block trackers that are going across sites. So if we go to, like, ironically... No, uh, let's go to... Let's have, which one has a lot of them? I think CNN.com does have a lot of trackers on it. I don't think I'll even be able to open CNN.com without JavaScript. Or at least see what the heck is going on but as you can see we uh cnn.com tried to go to quantserve and so that's probably is either a cdn or a analytics website which analytic is pretty much destroying your privacy these days and now i will show you guys system monitor and so basically this isn't actually a good way of seeing. So basically, I can show you everything that's happening with the amnesia user, which is ironically named because people have, <laughs> who have amnesia forget everything that they've done after a while. And so that's one property of the tail system. But basically, I can see everything that's happening right now. So we can see that we got the GNOME shell, which is basically this, and this, this is the GNOME shell, and this, it's basically the desktop itself deconf service that does the setting service, dbus, that allows some services to connect to each other, uh, system D, that's of course the initialization system, xorg, that's the display server, uh, of course this is just a system monitor, it's nothing too 
you know, blowing your mind. It's not like Windows ha doesn't have one. They definitely do. This is this is this is privacy. Okay. I'm tired of big tech companies saying that they like privacy and still give out software that is closed source. You can't access the source code, so you can't even prove that what they're doing is private. And then when you hook it up to a network and then you see that they're still pinging their own servers, that's not privacy. Okay. So now I'll show you guys the amnesia system, as it were. So I'll create a new folder on the desktop. I'll name it this will be gone when I reboot. Here we go. I have this folder. I'll put it right there. I'll change the wallpaper. Of course, we have a bunch of Debian wallpapers because, of course, it's based on Debian, so kind of like this one. Yeah, I like it. And I'll even open up LibreOffice. And of course, this LibreOffice is completely free and open source software, so whatever you type in here will not be sent out to anybody in on this planet. It is completely private, unless you de-anonymize de yourself by sending it to somebody. Okay. So, I can say that I have a gazillion grams of cocaine under the dumpster closest to KFC on I don't know what's some cool straight name Rover Street <laughs> not a dumpster although that might be what I am right now so basically I have this com very very you can't tell anybody okay this is very important information I'm gonna save this document I'm going to save it in a very important location. I don't know why people, like, in real life actually, like, put documents in the desktop. I feel like that's really psycho, but we can even encrypt this document with a GPG key, which is the GNU privacy... I forgot. It's GNU privacy something, and I forgot what it actually stands for. So I can select what certificate I want to use. So basically... Let's say that I was sending this to the systems administrators that are basically the people who are running the tail servers. I can encrypt to send to this person. Okay, I don't have. I, I realized I probably don't have a GPG key that works. Okay. Whatever. That was that was just me being stupid. I'll, I'll maybe explain how GPG works in another video, but. Basically, I have this really big secret. I put it, it's really secret, so I put it on my desktop. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm all done with my work day, and I want to reboot the system. See, it is instant reboot. No, no warning you. It's no reason to warn you. Tails. Well, admittedly, they should warn you because I've definitely rebooted by accident before and powered off by accident before while using the system but that's more of a gnome problem and not a tails problem see those outputs I pressed the down arrow key because that allows me to see what the init system is doing this is system D right here it's starting up services this has this thing called App Armor enabled. So basically, any applications are used, 
I, I believe App Armor sandboxes and applications. I I don't know a lot about App Armor, but so I'll wait for it to set my screen resolution real quick. There we go. So yeah, you you probably saw some fragments. That was because of X11 and the Spice protocol. That was not because of Tails. But basically, I can start Tails again. And X11, of course, you may recall is the windowing system for. Most Linux distributions. You may have Wayland, but Wayland kind of sucks. So yeah, now we're back to right where we were before. Everything is back to default. So that concludes my show off of what privacy Linux can offer you. I hope that a lot of people kind of knock it off that, like, Proprietary operating systems like Windows and Mac OS, they can never be private because privacy is not possible without free and open source software. Until they completely free and open source their oper operating systems, and not free as in price, but free as in freedom, privacy will never happen on those operating systems at all. In unless you completely disconnect the Wi-Fi, which then... Of course, with TPM, then your encryption keys are stored on the hard disk where any person can go in and figure out where your encryption keys were stored. Anyways, that's a conspiracy theory. I hope you liked this enjoy video. Uh, please like and subscribe, and have a nice day.